Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and here's an in-depth wiring guide on the NZXTC1200 Gold, an ATX 3.1 power supply unit with a modular design that allows you to plug in all the necessary cables. I'll leave timestamps down below so that you can jump to the relevant points in the video that you need, as well as links to the specs of the build that I'm doing so you can get an idea of what's included, and links to other relevant videos too. By the end of the video, you should have a good working idea of what cables you need, where they plug in, and how to set up your system but before that it is worth using a power supply calculator to work out the size of wattage you're going to need in order to power your system so have a look at the specs and i'll leave links in the description to that so you can work that out but this should be more than enough to power the system that i'm setting up here and to give a good setup to it as you can see it's modular which means you're only plugging in the cables we're going to need there's a variety of different connectors and I'm going to show you how to plug those in outside the case so you can easily see all the different connectors you're going to need and where they will set up. Inside the little bag that's included, you get your mains power supply cable, which is obviously British in this instance, but will vary depending on where you're buying it in the world. And then a bag full of all the different cables. There are a lot of cables included once you lay them all out, but don't panic because I am going to show you which ones we're going to use, where they're going to go, and then you might end up not having to use all of these depending on the motherboard and the graphics card and the other parts that you're using, for example. So not to worry, I'm gonna show you all the different steps here. We're going to start with the motherboard power cables, which is this large 24 pin and then two, which are marked CPU, which we'll get to in a second. The 24 pin power cable is split into two parts on the power supply end, which you can see on my left hand there. And then the other end will plug into the motherboard in a second. So you're looking for motherboard 20 plus 4 up here in the top left of the power supply and push those cables in. With all the power supply cables, it's really important to make sure these are pushed all the way in until they click into place. If you don't do so, you might find your system doesn't boot up properly. And this is especially important on the motherboard as well, because if you don't push it all the way into the motherboard socket, you might find it just doesn't turn on. The logic is the same for most modern motherboards, with the 24-pin power cable connecting on the right-hand side here. You'll notice there's a clip on this cable, which needs to go on the right-hand side as well, so you can't put it in the wrong way around you can see that you have to basically push this in until that clip clicks over the notch on the socket itself. So you just push that all the way in. Now, once again, don't do this until this is all installed in the case, but I wanted it to be really easy to see where these cables plug in and how it works. The next is the two eight pin CPU power connectors that are marked CPU on the end that connects to the motherboard. So it makes it nice and easy. These are quite similar looking to the PCIe power cables, which we'll get to in a minute. So don't get those confused or try to plug them in the wrong sockets. The markings will help with that. And then the ends that plug into the power supply plug into the ports marked CPU in the top right up here. You will need to plug in both cables for most motherboards. Not all though. Some will only require one. Some require one and one four pin. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But what we're going to do is plug those in there to the power supply and then the other end will plug into the motherboard in the top left. Again, this is the same for most motherboards. Most motherboards will require this and I would recommend plugging these in because they'll ensure that your motherboard gets enough power, especially for overclocking purposes or if you've got a high-end CPU or just a decent motherboard. You'll find these plug in again, same sort of logic. All of these power cables have little clips on them, so you can only put them in one way around. You'll also find that they have different style of connector, basically flat and round connectors at the top. Have a close look and you'll see what I mean. But you can only plug them in one way and you'll see once again, plastic clips go over the little notch on the socket so that they seat in place perfectly and are held down there. Now it's worth noting that one of the CPU power connectors, you can see this one, can be split apart. So you can actually split it if you need to. The reason for this is that some motherboards require one eight pin and one four pin power connector. So this allows you to half this cable if you need it and just plug that in to the motherboard. Now this gigabyte one doesn't, but I have seen other ones like this NZXT board, for example, you can see where that has just one four pin connector. So you split the cable and then you can plug it in there in the top left nice and easily. So it might vary from motherboard to motherboard. Yours might be different, but that's how you do it. And it plugs in the top left. And again, once everything's installed, but just so you can see it nice and easily. 
and then you should end up with that sort of setup being the power for the motherboard itself and then all the other cables are used for the additional parts for example this is the SATA connectors you have two of these cables and there are multiple connectors on the power cable so you'll see one end connects to the power supply and the other end had this flat connector with an L-shaped socket on it and there's multiple different ones of these along the cable itself this allows you to connect up multiple different devices and you might only need one of these cables or you might need both depending on what you're doing. In this build I'm using two SSDs and one hard disk drive but this cable is also used for fan controllers and other things so we'll get to that later on. Now the end that plugs into the power supply plugs into the peripheral port of the power supply unit in the bottom left here where it's peripheral and SATA connections and then the other end plugs into your SSDs and hard disk drives and other things. Note you'll see there's an L shape to the connection so there's a notch on it so it can only be plugged in one way so don't try and force it make sure it's facing the right way when you go to plug it in. This cable can be plugged into multiple drives so you can actually power multiple SSDs and hard disk drives from this cable really easily so you can easily connect up those however if you are using multiple fan controllers for some reason then you might want to use two separate cables because obviously the power draw might be too high so if you find something's not working it could be that you need to use the two cables rather than trying to power everything from a single one but for drives you can basically plug them all in with one cable really easily so two ssds connected up here and then you can also connect up the hard disk drive with the same sort of logic and basically daisy chain them all together and that's the nice thing about these cables which means you might not need to use both cables in your system then for connecting the drives to the motherboard you should find the data cables included with the motherboard and they'll plug in in the bottom right hand side here where the SATA ports are so you run that cable from the drive to the port and you'll need a cable for each of the drives that you're plugging in these also have a tiny little l-shaped connector to them so only plug in one way and you'll notice that a little metal clip on them as well again these will be included with your motherboard so you should hopefully find those in the motherboard box and then they'll slot in and connect up that way and that way the drives are powered and also can send the data back and forth from the drives to the motherboard and communicate easily that way next up is the molex connector now you might not use this one because it's pretty unusual but you can see it here with the razor chroma rgb controller for example but it also works with liquid cooled pumps so custom loop systems for example and dvd drives and older things so it really depends on what you're putting in your system but that plugs into the peripheral and SATA ports down the bottom it's a very fiddly cable to put together in two connectors you can see with this Razer Chroma controller you have a connector here you have to make sure it's the right way around because it's flat on one side and sort of notched on the other side and it's very fiddly to push in especially if the pins are moving around inside there so you might find you have to wiggle and jiggle it around a bit until it seats into place next up the PCIe power connectors you'll see there's three eight pin power connectors here so hopefully that'll do for any GPU that you're using and I'm using a 3090 for demonstration purposes on one end you'll find the cable marked PCIe power so you can see PCIe there and you'll see it splits into two parts a six pin and a two pin and those need to be pushed together the other end which doesn't split apart plugs into the PCIe power connectors and I'd recommend using the bottom right here but any of those ports that are available you can plug those in now this GPU requires two of these cables so I'd recommend plugging in the two here making sure they're fully seated and then the other end plugs into the graphics card now these cables need to be pushed together and you need to be very careful to make sure that these are clipped in properly because it's very easy for these cables to come apart so where that two pin for example connects to the six pin if that's not fully put in properly there you might find your GPU doesn't work properly you're getting less FPS than you should or perhaps some other problems so push this all the way in and again this has a little clip on it that clicks over a notch on the GPU and you'll need to use the two cables to plug these in now as I said there's three cables included so if you have a GPU that requires three that shouldn't be a problem if you've got a GPU that requires one obviously you just use one cable alternatively you have the 600 watt 12 volt high power connectors which looks like this it's the same connection on both ends that plugs into the bottom right 
on the 12 volt 2 times 6 connector down the bottom here. So you plug that in that way. And again, this can only be plugged in one way, but it's the same on both ends. So that plugs into the power supply unit and the other end plugs into your GPU. This is intended for NVIDIA's 40 series and beyond graphics cards and basically replaces the standard adapter that you'd usually get with those GPUs. So here, for example, Gigabyte 4070 comes with this adapter that requires two 8-pin PCIe power connectors, and that ends up making a mess in your case and looking horrible, so you can just swap that for the 12 volt high power connector instead. It makes life a lot easier and it's a lot more straightforward, but you do need to make sure it's seeded carefully into the graphics card and into the power supply pushed all the way in. So you can see the connector and how it would work. This is a black version of the cable, but it's the same logic. You just push it all the way into that, making sure the little notches go in all the way. Those are all the different connections that you might need. I'd recommend now going about the process of plugging those cables in before you install it. So get an idea of which cables you need, which you're going to be using, and plug the cables into the power supply early because it will make life a lot easier than trying to plug these cables in once you've installed the power supply in the case. It'll be a lot less fiddly and a lot less hassle. So if you're doing the same as me, follow what I've just shown you and plug all those cables in. I won't be using the Molex, for example, but I obviously need the 24-pin power cable, both the CPU power connectors, two PCIe power connectors for the graphics card and a SATA cable as well. And then you can see the power supply set up. Now, normally you'd plug your power supply unit into the case facing downwards to pull air from below, but because this case doesn't have any venting at the bottom, we actually need to put it face up. So this is an intake fan, so it's gonna be pulling air from above through the holes at the top there which is a bit of an unusual design. Other cases, you generally put it face down and then screw it in. You use the hexagonal screws that are either included with the power supply unit or with your case. So you'll find they have a little hex top on them and they screw into the four corners, as you can see here, the four holes. So you should find it lines up nicely and then just screws in with those four screws really easily and secures there. And then we need to just go about managing the cables. I'd recommend first making use of the Velcro ties because what you'll find is you wanna make sure all the cables have enough length in them when you've actually gone to plug them in. But as you can see with the Velcro ties down this case at the rear, you can pull them all the way out and stick the 24 pin power cable behind them, for example, and then secure that down. You can put the tie over the top of the cable instead if you wish. Then for the two 8-pin CPU power connectors, we can run those across the right-hand side. There's another Velcro tie over there that you can use. Quite small and fiddly, I found. But you can run these up here. Now, you will find that there are various different loops through the case that you can use the plastic cable ties with. And you can tidy up your cables at this point if you want to, using those. However, what I've found is that you do need to be careful doing this because I'm doing it right now with the two 8-pin CPU power connectors. But what I found is I actually tighten this up too much and then the cables aren't quite long enough to reach the socket easily. And I'll show you that in a second. So be careful not to overdo it with your cable management. Make sure you're going to be able to reach the various different ports that you're plugging into. So you leave some of the cable tidying to the end. So the 24 pin power cable that we ran earlier on through those Velcro ties is now pushed through to the front and slotted into place. So don't forget, you can only plug this in one way. You need to make sure it's fully seated and you hear the click so that it's fully pushed in. You'll notice that this is a little bit fiddly behind the cable bar, so it can be a bit tight there, but this does make sure things are nice and neat there and it's hidden away from view for the most part. The two 8-pin CPU power connectors are the area that I then had a problem with, which is why I mentioned not overdoing it with the cable tying early on. I'd made this bottom plastic tie a little bit tight, which meant there wasn't quite enough length in the cables, so I had to force them through it and push them up a bit further. So it might be worth plugging the cables in first and then doing the cable tidying once you're sure that they can actually reach the ports. So the two 8-pin CPU power cables now are a bit looser and I can plug those in and then if you wanted to, you could then cable tie them down a bit more efficiently at the back to neaten them up a little bit more. The other thing that I mentioned earlier on that requires SATA power, if you've got it, is this NZXT RGB and fan controller. There are various different fan controllers available out there and a lot of them have the same sort of logic where they require SATA power in order to work. So this thing goes in place of 
RGB controllers from NZXT that come with the Kraken, for example, and allows you to plug in six RGB cables and up to nine fan power connectors as well. So you can connect fans to it and then control it with NZXT's CAM software. It requires SATA power though, so you will need to plug it into your power supply unit. This is pretty similar across various different controllers from the Corsair, for example, as well. So you might find that as well as the SSDs and hard disk drives, you're also plugging in something like this. So watch out for that. Make sure you've plugged in the right amount of cables based on what I've shown you, depending on what you're putting in your build so that you can have all those cables in your case. You can see that I've got a spare one down here that I can plug into, for example, to make sure this has got power. And you might also need one for your all-in-one cooler. Now, don't forget the PCIe power connectors for your graphics card. Find a relevant place to run them through your case. I found, for example, you can do it in the front of this case through a little hole there, but you might find you need to do it in the middle somewhere. It can vary, but you need to make sure you've got enough length in the cables so that they aren't stretched or taut, and that you can plug the cables in nicely with a bit of slack and make sure that they're pinched together and pushed all the way in. You should then find that hopefully if you've connected everything correctly, it all boots up nicely and runs well. I've done a full in-depth guide to this PC build inside the NZXT H5 Flow RGB that I'll link to in the description and guides on the Kraken cooler as well as the fans that you can see here and more. So check those links out as well. But hopefully you've found this video useful. If you have, subscribe to come back for more and let me know in the comments down below what you found most useful. Thanks for watching.